Hey guys, this is Dorian, and this is the part two of my Manjaro review. I've had it for a week now, a week and a day, and um, I like it. It's it's GNOME, of course, um, so it's very similar to my Ubuntu GNOME, um, but it's more up to date because it's a, a rolling release. So I'm running uh, 3.26.2 now, I think, and. Um, so very, very similar, just more up-to-date, couple of uh, new little nifty features. Um, I have had a couple of little snags along the way. And one thing, I'm not sure if you can see in the screen recording, but I've got a lot of screen tearing going on when I have motion. But that is because I had to disable the V-Sync for my video card. Um, because when I was screen recording, I was getting all kinds of artifacts and weird things going on. So I had to um, go into here, uh, etc profile D, and make a custom.sh with this. And then I had to go into etcx11xorg.conf.d and make a 20 graphics.conf and add this. Doing all this uh, made the screen recording not weird. I was seeing my desktop through the windows and there was all kinds of weird flashing going on. Um, one of my videos <clears throat> has some of that going on at the end. So after doing all this, the screen recording's clear, but now I'm getting some weird tearing going on. But anyways, uh, that's something else I'm going to sort out. And that's one thing with uh, Linux in general that I've kind of given up on. Uh, in Ubuntu, I was able to get uh, my NVIDIA graphics working properly. So I was able to uh, switch back and forth between my two graphics cards that I have. However, uh, it wasn't perfect and the performance wasn't the greatest, so I switch into Windows 10 for hardcore gaming. And uh, so I said, well, screw it then. And I have the Nuvo drivers installed and I've disabled the NVIDIA card altogether for uh, Linux because, mind my cat, he's being chatty today. Anyways, um, most of the games that I play are not super heavy and the onboard Intel card works just fine. So I don't really care about the Nvidia card. And when it comes to rendering, I mostly do video rendering. I don't do a lot of heavy 3D rendering in Blender. So um, video editing only uses one thread of a CPU anyways, and there's not that much of a difference between rendering video using my GPU and my CPU, so I just use the CPU. Um, other things on my Twitter that I tweeted about um, for Nautilus, the file spacing looked like this. and. It was all dictated by the length of the file name or the folder name. And this is ugly, but some folders were just a complete mess. And uh, I showed in Twitter how you go in, use Pacman, which is the package manager for Manjaro, install downgrader, and then you just type downgrader pango, and it will give you a list of all previous versions available and I picked 13 as you can see on the bottom which is 1.40.12 and that fixed it for me so the 13-1 and 13-2 um, was the ones causing issues so when I downgraded to the 0.14.12 and restarted Nautilus it fixed it all made it all pretty again uh, other issues I had, uh, Geary, which is my mail client that I like to use because it's 
really nice. It's light and it's not too busy. Um, you need to reinstall GNOME-Keyring. I don't know why, but reinstalling that fixed it and got it to work. Um, Steam didn't work right off the bat. I had to install Steam Native. After I did that, it worked just fine. And Dropbox was only available in the Arch user repository, which you have to enable, and these are the settings. And uh, if we go into the package manager, I think I mentioned this before, that when you search for something, you get your standard repositories with everything in it, uh, but there are some things that are not there, like Dropbox. It is in the AUR. Now, I don't know why it shows up here, because I actually had to get it from the AUR. It was not in the repositories, or maybe it is now. Either way, um, yeah, the AUR, like I mentioned, um, is kind of a use at your own risk, because anybody can upload packages here. Not necessarily for malicious reasons, but possibly stability and lack of testing. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything works great. I, I like GNOME. It's pretty. And uh, oh, what did I have here? Ah, it's a screenshot. It's an actual camera shot. That's why it's a little blurry. Uh, this was for when I was doing the dual boot video. Um, I don't actually install anything on my Windows drive. I have two separate drives, so really when I boot up my laptop, I just hit my hotkey to choose a boot device, and I pick which hard drive to boot from. Um, but yeah, GNOME is uh, nice, of course, and uh, it's smooth. And uh, yeah. Animations are good. I don't know if you see all the screen tearing, but. So there have been a few snags here and there. Uh, I also had some things popping up in my boot up. Uh, there's some complaints from the Nuvo driver. And at the beginning, I've got some ACPI errors. I'll show you uh, what I had to do here to quiet down. I had way more ACPI errors, but I had to. I know. Default scrub. So here, I'll get rid of this. I had to add this, which got rid of a lot of my ACPI errors, and it also allowed the NVIDIA card to power down. I put that in its own video on how to cut it out. Yes, I had to uh, put that, I, I put that in its own video on how to power down your NVIDIA card if you use a hybrid, hybrid graphics card like I do. Um, so yeah, for the most part, it's, uh, it's an OS. It's the it's the engine running under the hood. Um, one thing about the new GNOME is uh, its transparency stuff. Uh, the top bar always goes transparent unless you maximize. And I didn't like it because it didn't match. Again, it's it's all aesthetic stuff. It didn't match the uh, the dock, which I like to always leave like that. Uh, so I had to make the dock transparent and then I had to add an extension, which was dynamic panel transparency. And this is for 3.26. You can go in here and you can set the background to customize the opacity. So 
you have your maximize and unmaximize. Normally it's like this, so the bar is solid. And I just did it like this. And that's in the extensions page. I can type. Uh, dynamic tr panel transparency. So yeah, you do that and then, um, but the thing is it doesn't show up right away. So you change it and it doesn't show up. I actually had to uh, do the old Alt F2 and R. And then when you hit enter, it reloads the whole GNOME UI. Uh, and then that's when it finally kicks in. So it seems like it's not working at first, but it does. Uh, other things. Blur, I really like. Blur was kind of a mess in uh, 3.24 and earlier, but now it works pretty well. It blurs the background. It's okay. It's a bit choppy now. It's usually a bit smoother, but I think that's because I put in those, uh, those settings that I was showing you earlier. And uh, yeah. Oh, and the no menu which is this, which is okay. Um, I'm thinking of ditching it because uh, I actually don't really use it that often. The only time I actually use it for some reason is to go to other and open the Manjaro settings just because, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm used to going into settings from this corner, but this is what lets you uh, change your graphics drivers and also lets you change your kernels to whichever one you want. I did try this 14.14 kernel. I installed it and had a couple of lockups and freezes and there was nothing in the log files because it was an instant lockup which needed a, a forced power off. So, Like I said in my other videos, don't play with the kernels. You don't really need to. Um, once 4.14 becomes a finished final product for the next LTS, it's going to pop up here and I assume the system is going to want to update because uh, Manjaro has this nifty little updater icon up here and you'll get some numbers beside it when there's packages that need to be updated and it'll list which packages need to be updated. So. Yeah, and that's right here. Manjaro Linux Packages Updates Indicator Tool thing. Um, another thing, but then again, this is also GNOME related, is uh, I don't know how to uninstall these extensions. I could turn them off, but I don't know how to uninstall them. So, yeah. Um, Another thing I found was Nightlight, the new Nightlight feature, which was in oh, Devices, Displays, On, Manual. Uh, let's see if I can change this now. There. So I like, I sort of like it because it Dim, it makes your uh, screen go reddish so it's easier on the eyes but uh, it goes far too red uh, I also have Redshift which I used in Ubuntu and it'll actually show you the color so you can actually see it changing so it changes di dynamically but Again, it goes far too warm, so I might look into figuring out how to change those settings. I don't really particularly care right now. Uh, right now, my concern is getting this whole screen recording thing sorted out. Um, I think it's also causing an issue for me in Blender with rendering the frames kind of skip around a little bit sometimes and I've been 
mucking around with the settings but yeah um, stability wise it's good it's just this graphical anomaly which is a Linux thing this is why you dual boot triple boot quad boot whatever uh, with Windows because Windows is the king of 3D, sorry to say. Um, my PC, this, this is my laptop though, with a hybrid card, so that could cause issues. My PC runs fine with the NVIDIA drivers, I have no issues there. And uh, it's just my laptop, but I like to use my laptop for most things because I can sit at the kitchen table, I can sit in the office, I can sit in my bedroom, sit on the couch and record anywhere, play with everything anywhere. But So yeah, that's it. I'm still happy. If I figure out this graphics issue, I will definitely uh, post up another video. But for now, I'm still happy with it. Still going to keep using it. And uh, that's it. So if you want to see more little fixes um, as I find them or maybe you maybe you're quite knowledgeable and you can help me then follow me on Twitter at Dorian.slash and if you like the video like it and subscribe for more that's it for now till next time